<laughs> well, first I'd like to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, this is a momentous occasion for me. Uh, my very first solo art show, so I have a lot of people to thank. And first of all, I'd like to thank God, through whom all things are possible. Then I'd like to thank my lovely wife and family for supporting me and understanding me, working late, spending many long hours. Then I'd like to especially thank Ken Simmons and the ETA Theater for having me here. You know. Uh, I've been an artist all my life, you know, as long as I can remember. And uh, I've had a wonderful time uh, creating art and been very fortunate enough to have made my living from my art, which is truly a blessing. And, uh, you know, it's uh, been a, a great experience. And I've uh, done many, many different things as an artist. Uh, as far as uh, illustration, design, and now I'm beginning my fine art career. And so, again, this is a very momentous occasion for me, and once again, I'd like to thank you all for coming out. Um, I'd like to uh, explain a little bit more about myself. I'm originally from Flint, Michigan, and uh, I came to Chicago in 1973 uh, to study art at the American Academy of Art here. And uh, after leaving the American Academy of Art, uh, I got a job, believe it or not, working at the Yellow Pages, where I did little Yellow Page ads. And then finally, uh, from that, I became an apprentice uh, at Lear Burnett Advertising and uh, moved on to work for many different companies as an illustrator. I worked as an illustrator for World Book, Encyclopedia Britannica, a company called Times Mirror, where I developed science charts and film strips for the Ministry of Education of Saudi Arabia. I also have done illustrations for many magazines, books, and publications uh, that aired, you know, were published in, you know, for many different things. I also uh, have done a lot of work uh, as far as uh, black history, uh, something that's near and dear to my heart. And I like to say I create art of a positive nature. Uh, with that, I mean that I like to create art that tells a story. You know, there's art that you can create just for art's sake, but my personal belief, uh, I'd like to tell a story and uh, have influence on people uh, from, uh, I call it a psychographic nature, meaning that the image is speaking to you in a way uh, without your even being aware of it. Like when, and there are meaning behind each piece of my art. You know, there are artists that create work just for the sake of art. My art has meaning to it. And so, I try to tell a story with my art. And the reason I'm showing these pieces right here, these are pieces that are very near and dear to me. Uh, this piece over here is actually a piece I call the mother of nature. I mean, mother of Eden. And the, mo the reason I call this the mother of Eden, because now, which I knew for a long time myself, but DNA now proves that you can track everyone's existence back to an African woman. And this is an African Samburu Maasai woman from the Ugandan area where they have found the earliest uh, detection of mankind. They say that's, so in my mind, Africa is Eden. It's, in the Bible it says God placed man eastward in Eden. East Africa is the home of all mankind hence the mother of Eden. This piece, I call this the man of the now. The reason I call this the man of the now, when you watch TV, most times they represent Egyptians and Africans as being white, as if we did not possess the knowledge and technology to build in our own land 
the longest standing mon monument to all mankind, the pyramids. We also created, a lot of us do not know that black people invented sailing. You know, many of us, very few of us own any boats or sailing ships, but the very first people to sail and explore the world were Africans. We created ships that you could literally take apart and reconstruct and carry across land and then place back in the water to travel on. Black people did that, hence the man of the Nile. And this shows Egypt as it was at high noon. The pyramids were, were white, polished limestone that could be seen for miles around. It actually glowed against the uh, horizon. So uh, these two pieces are very important pieces to me because of their significance to me as a black person and our cont contribution to all mankind. You know, the cradle of mankind, the very first people to do brain surgery, okay? The Egyptians actually operated did brain surgery just as they do today through your nose. If you have to have brain surgery, they can either cut your skull or they can go through your nose and actually do brain surgery. And there's evidence of them actually drilling holes in people's heads, doing surgery, and people still living, okay? Doing heart surgery. So uh, again, this is a, a very important piece to me personally for that reason alone. Um, this is another piece, I call this the royal couple, and which in the background, uh, again, in describing us as we were, okay, showing uh, a black man and woman proud of their heritage, exhibiting the power that we all possess, okay, in the background, is the dream of Tutmosis, of uh, the reunification of Egypt. So, you know, you may look at this, it may just look like a picture of Egyptians or black people, but they have a deeper meaning and significance, okay? And as you continue on, you know, a lot of you are familiar with Miles, you know, uh, who was a pioneer of jazz that spanned the decades you know, from bebop to hip hop, you know, Miles played and was a perfectionist and uh, a person who really lived the life of a musician. And just as I lived the life of an artist, he lived the musician life. To be a creator is truly the closest that you can ever become to God because the creative process is spiritual, mental, then physical. <laughs> Everything that you see was once someone's spiritual inclination. The mind helped them make a plan of how to go about building it, and then they physically uh, did it. You're, you have to physically complete the trilogy of creation. And so to be a creator of any type is your closest expression that you can have to be God. You're not God, you know. But that's your closest connection to God, is to create. Uh, to create is a wonderful thing, you know, uh, no matter what you create. To create is a wonderful thing. It, it takes a planning, knowledge, and skill to create. It takes nothing to destroy. So if you're a creator, give yourself an applause because that is what uh, the true essence of mankind is to build and to be a builder, no matter what it is. So uh, that's the reason I, I really especially like Miles, because he created a variety of music. He didn't stop at his generation. He didn't just play bebop. He went bebop to classical jazz, to contemporary jazz, and he ultimately you know, uh, again, span the decades. He even played Michael Jackson music, and then hip-hop rappers rapped to him. 
you know. So, you know, uh, to me, that's uh, one reason I really admire uh, Miles Davis. You know, next to it is, and, and this is an oil painting, by the way. Uh, these others are acrylics and mixed media. Uh, these two paintings are oil paintings, and uh, this is a, my newest painting. I call this uh, Ramsey Waves. And uh, in uh, my effort to tell the story of music uh, is, you know, I, I listen to music all the time. You know, my wife will say, you know, turn, that I, I, I can't do anything without listening to some music. Can we have some quiet sometime? You know, but, you know, music speaks to the soul. And it speaks directly to my soul. And so there's a rhythm in everything that I do. And so when I'm painting, I'm always listening to music of different ilks and for inspiration to help. Uh, just, uh, it just helps, it's just part of my creative flow. And so I'm always listening to music and this painting is an example of, of my trying to interpret the music of Ramsey, that's all I was listening to the whole time, to the variety of different things and just kind of getting the whole feel of the whole deal. And uh, you know, I, I met someone, they were like, why are you painting so many musicians and everything? And I'm, because I'm painting what I love. You know, I love music, and I live with rhythm, and uh, so I'm, I'm just, you know, following my, my passion in that. You know, uh, down here further, the black and white pieces are pieces that were part of a series of 28 pieces that I did for Black History Month uh, that aired on uh, WGN Channel 9. A uh, different one was narrated by different entertainers. Uh, for each day of the Black History Month. And then, you know, uh, there's another interpretation, uh, the colorful piece down there, I call that G Magic, uh, which, uh, you know, you may not be able to tell, but it's truly Grover Washington in that painting. And he did a, a song called Mr. Magic back in the day. And uh, actually, I did that painting at O'Hare Airport uh, during uh, Artist Month as a painting demonstration. And so, uh, you know, I had a good time doing that. There was a, I was accompanied by a little uh, uh, Brazilian uh, duet uh, called Samba Brazil. And they played while I painted. And so, you know, <laughs> so it was all good, you know. It was hard to get much better than that, you know. <laughs> You know, they were playing a uh, 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 lady from Ipanema and, and Mascanada. And so they was, I was <laughs> moving and grooving, you know, the whole time, you know, you know getting the feel uh, as I was painting it. And then, you know, down further, I call that the Jazz Man, which is dedicated to the resurrection of jazz or the resurrection of New Orleans. And uh, it's a guy who uh, they called, actually it's a real person. His name was Tuba Fats, and uh, he was a funeral marcher. And, you know, just some, I, I had a little picture of him, it wasn't complete, you know, but I had a little photo of him, and I looked, and I, I always researched my work. I found other pictures of tubas, and, uh, you know, pictures of New Orleans, you know, uh, to, I, I have a concept that I work from. You know, I'll just get an inclination, a spiritual inclination to create something. And I thought about, you know, uh, the resurrection of New Orleans. And so uh, it just kind of came to me and I put him, placed him on uh, Bourbon Street, a famous street corner down there. And uh, uh, just try to, uh, it's kind of a twist because the funeral marchers march during the day, but that's more of a, a evening or night scene.